First things first, Alicia Weir. I remember seeing her play Matilda in the Matilda musical a couple of years ago, and I thought, that girl has some talent. And now here she is playing Abigail, the ballerina vampire, and once again, I gotta say, that girl has some talent. She is just awesome in this film. Really, really damn good. The complete opposite role of Matilda in every way, shape and form, but she crushed it. She was probably the highlight of the film for me. Everyone else in the film, for the most part, was also quite good. My favourite of the criminals was probably Dan Stevens. His constant, just loud complaining and confusion about the situation. Every other word is probably an F-bomb. I thought it was quite hilarious. He cracked me up a lot. But I gotta say, Melissa Barrara, personally, I find her to be a really bland actress. Every time I see her in anything, it's the exact same performance, the exact same facial expressions. I just, I just don't think she's a great actress. And it's the exact same story here. Once Abigail breaks free and she reveals herself as a vampire and she starts picking off these people one by one, I was actually having a good time with the film. It's very bloody, very, very gory. The practical effects are actually quite impressive. There's this one scene where a character gets their hand blown off and it's just a stump and you see it all spewing out and it, it, it was gross, it looked pretty good. It does a good job of leaning into the absurdity of the premise. You know, we kidnapped a vampire, a ballerina vampire, and it's just, it's a good time. They have a good time with that premise and I was having a good time with the film until the third act. And I'm not gonna lie to you, the third act of this film brought it down quite a bit for me. I was not a fan of the direction they took the story, the characters. I'm actually gonna talk about spoilers for a change because being vague all the time just can get a bit boring, I understand that. So if you don't want Abigail being spoiled for you, just wait for the spoiler warning to disappear, then you're all good. When I saw the trailer, I said to myself, okay, I bet in some contrived, forced, bullshit kind of way that Melissa Barrara is the sole survivor of this entire thing. And yeah, I was right, but it gets better than that. Giancarlo Esposito comes back, turns out he's a vampire, surprise. And him and Dan Stevens have a relationship. They are tied to Abigail and some event that happened in the past at a hotel with a lot of death. It's a convoluted ass backstory that I did not give a shit about. I just wanted vampire slaughter. So Dan Stevens becomes a vampire. He kills Giancarlo Esposito. And then Abigail and Melissa Barrara team up to fight Dan Stevens, who's now the big bad of the film. Dan Stevens becoming the big bad vampire at the end just made it feel like a generic vampire film at that point. And the whole novelty of the vampire ballerina Abigail was completely thrown out the window at that point. And I just thought that was lame. I mean, forgive me for wanting the vampire ballerina Abigail, the title character, to be the focal point of the whole thing pretty much but they just got rid of that and I rolled my damn eyes when she and Melissa Barrara team up in the end because come on, why? Why do they have to team up? They just, it just felt so forced and it pissed me off. So yeah, bad ending, wasn't a fan, left me with a bad taste in my mouth walking out of the cinema, which was a bummer because again, up until that point, I was genuinely having a good time with the gory, bloody vampire slaughter. So I'd say catch this film at a daytime watch and at the point where a character blows up, <laughs> being very vague about that one, just walk out because the last 20 minutes will just bring the whole thing down for you.